Hey, what's up YouTube? Down the Fix It Man. Got another quick video here for you. This is that 2006 Toyota Tundra that I was working on the other day. And we got it started with the uh, jump pack, the NOCO GB70. I just did that in a previous video on how to use the manual override boost function. I'll put a link to that in the description here. But what we want to figure out is if we have a parasitic draw or a parasitic drain. We think it might have sat for a month or more before it was attempted to be started by the owner and then it didn't start and then it sat, you know, for maybe a few more months until they called me out to to come take a look. Most cars, if they sit for a month or two, the battery will drain down because of the, the radio memory, the, the computer memory. It does always take a little bit of a draw from your battery. On this vehicle, what I looked up online, they said pretty much anything under 50 milliamps is normal. So anything over that, we're, we might have to start chasing that with each fuse. And I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. You just want to make sure you start with a fully charged battery. You can see we're at 12.78. Nice full charge on this battery and verify that it starts the car. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use these little alligator leads so I can clip my meter on here and then show you the voltage as we attempt to start this. Hopefully these will work okay. Just kind of scratching that on there, make sure we get a good contact. So I'm going to go start the vehicle and we can verify that this voltage does not drop below 10. All right, so you can see we did not drop below 10 while starting that. We saw a little bit of drop there with the alarm going off. You can also see that our charging system is working fine. We're just over 14 volts and that's great. All right, well, let's go shut it off and then we'll get set up to do that test for the parasitic draw. Before you get set up for the parasitic draw test, make sure that you turn everything off, all the lights off inside the vehicle. Since I need the door open in order to get to the fuse panel here, but I don't want the dome light on, I'm gonna take off this little sensor here. It's just a little door switch. Now you can also try to tape this down. I tried, but the tape just wouldn't hold it. The spring in there is just too strong. So now our dome light's not gonna come on and then the alarm's not gonna go off while we're trying to do this test. We know we've got a good battery and a good charging system. So to get set up for the parasitic draw test, we need to disconnect the negative battery cable. I'm gonna take that off. Now these little alligator clamps that I have, they're great for little stuff, but they're not gonna clamp onto the battery post or the battery terminal here. So I'm going to use regular jumper cables. So I need to clip on one to the post, and then this one is gonna clip onto the actual battery cable. Just make sure it's a good connection, just kind of wiggle it on there. And you wanna make sure that these don't touch. If you can, just kind of prop it over here out of the way. All right, and then at the other end, I'm gonna clip on to this probe and then the other one to this probe here and just make sure all of your connections are away from each other not touching anything we're going to change our meter to amps and then we need to pull out this terminal and pop it in here now right now the truck is going to sleep it takes about three minutes for the truck to go to sleep after we shut it off so that's what it's doing right now it's important that you shut everything off because anything you turn on is going to be running through these little wires here so we don't want to do that so make sure everything's off looks like it's settled here anywhere between 40 and 50 milliamps if you have a better meter you can set that to milliamps in our case it's just set to the 10 amps and we're at 0 0.04 right now so again anything under 0 0.05 is fine and we're fluctuating between 0 0.04 and 0 five on this meter so we know we do not have a parasitic draw i'm still going to show you how to test for it if for example you had like a 0.1 or a 0.15 or something like that that's 150 milliamps that's way too high obviously the more current that's drawing the faster that will kill your battery or drain your battery now since we have these jumper cables and if you have some long lead you can set your meter up on the windshield facing the inside so while you pull the fuses one at a time you're able to see the meter Okay, so we have our meter set up. I just have it propped right up here on the hood. Still just kind of fluctuating or sitting right around 0 0.04, 0 0.05. And then right down here is our fuse panel on this Tundra. Just pull off that cover and then there's all of our fuses. And all you need to do is just go through and pull these one at a time. And after you pull it, and take a look at that meter and see if that voltage drops each time. All right, but now I'm gonna create a parasitic draw and then we're gonna use this method to find it. All right, so what I've done is I've created or simulated a parasitic draw. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to find that. So right now we're at 0 0.19, 0 0.18, 180, 190 milliamps. That's definitely gonna kill a battery maybe in a couple days. So all we need to do is pull the fuses one at a time until that drops. So we just pull these, this one out here, and then let's take a look at the meter, unchanged. So let's put it back in, do the next one, no change. Put that back in. 
So you just go all the way through and you pull each one. I'm gonna fast forward or skip ahead to this one down here. Pull that. So you can see our voltage dropped now. So we're at 0 0.03, 0 0.04. So this is the circuit where we have our simulated parasitic draw. And let's take a look and see what that is. And right there, that says OBD 7.5 amp. So your OBD port has a short or has a draw, has a current draw. And that's what I did right here. I just plugged in this little code reader and that's creating a current draw. If you left this plugged in by accident, which uh, I have done, that will drain your battery. So that was our parasitic draw. This was left plugged into that port, causing that current draw. So let's go ahead and put this back in. And you're done. So that's how easy it is to test for a parasitic draw. Again, we're within spec here, so we don't have a parasitic draw. This vehicle just did sit for a long time, and that's what eventually drained the battery down to where it wouldn't start. And then after that, it sat longer and completely drained the battery down. This little flashing LED, I think, is the is the reason. But again, that's within spec, so we're not going to mess with anything. Just going to let the owner know that uh, he does not have a parasitic draw and just needs to drive the truck more frequently. And I think that'll fix this issue. Let's put our battery terminal back on. You also just want to make sure that these cables are clean. Get that snug down. And don't forget, we need to put this little door switch back. This is probably going to cause our alarm to go off. But let's get this back in there. And just that one 10 millimeter. See, once that switch grounds out, it just likes to make that alarm go off. There we go. So really just a dead battery from sitting. That's all we had to deal with on this one. If you do plan on parking a vehicle for a long period of time, you can get a battery maintainer or a battery tender to have that plugged in and keep the battery from going bad. In this case, I think we were able to bring it back. That smart charger, the Genius 5 from NOCO, didn't show any errors or issues with this. Uh, we, we left it on there and let it do its thing and it looks like we're in good shape. Starts the vehicle, no problem. I think we'll be fine. So now you know a simple way to test and find or look for a parasitic draw with a multimeter. I hope you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind that does help me out. I'll get a link in the description to some of the parts and tools used in the video as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.